So, you know what? Yeah, the way that you dress, it does matter to God. And it matters to other people for that matter. You know, we're supposed to be ambassadors for Christ. We're supposed to be examples of what a Christian should be. What type of example are you setting forth when you step out of your door every day? When you go out into the world? Are you drawing attention to yourself? Are you being immodest? Do you look like a whore? We believe in being a peculiar people, and that's definitely going to make you different the way that you dress. Now, you don't have to, you know, you can wear modest clothing and not look like you're necessarily from the 50s. All right? Styles change. I get that. You, you don't have to, in your zeal to become righteous, look that much different because i'll tell you what when you start looking way different you're going to get eyes upon you anyways you want to be able to blend in but blend in a way that you're still being modest still covering yourself you're not you know exposing your nakedness you're not um you know dressed like a hooker but you can you can still wear clothing that that You'd fit in with anyone else, just like Jesus did when he was with his disciples and they didn't know which one he was. He just kind of fit in. He just looked like a normal guy. And we can look like normal people, yet still adhere to what the Bible says as what we should, what we should wear. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I put this in my notes, because I would have forgotten about this. But I have in my notes, park it on mo modesty. Because this is important. And especially now where we're at in the Atlanta, Georgia area, it gets pretty hot and it's in the middle of summer right now. And it's, it's amazing to me that even in the world's eyes, we live, we live in a world where it is totally acceptable for a woman to go down to a, to a lake or a swimming pool and wear nothing but a bikini and that's fine but if a woman were to just wear her underwear just a, a bra and underwear and just go out to the grocery store that would be totally unacceptable what's the difference is it just because there's a body of water around is that what it, so if you went to a grocery store that had a swimming pool then i assume it would just be fine it makes no sense and I'll tell you what, it would be inappropriate to go to the grocery store in your underwear. But it's also inappropriate to go around a body of water in your underwear. Or in a, in a, in a two-piece bathing suit that, that's like your underwear. It's just as inappropriate. Just because the world is accepting of that doesn't make it any less appropriate. Any less inappropriate. Excuse me. Turn if you would to Isaiah 47. I'm going to define this for you. Say, Pastor Brother, what are you talking about? Why, why do you believe that? Well, the Bible defines what nakedness is. It gives us the answer. And, and exposing our nakedness is always associated with shame. Just as, and, and it's natural. It's natural for a person to be ashamed when you're out in public or when you're visible by other people and you're exposed. That's why you don't generally see, I mean, as the world gets worse and worse, we'll probably see more and more of it, but generally you don't see women going out in public just wearing their underwear. No, I know in San Francisco, they've got, they've got all kinds of weird perversion over there. And I think, they, didn't they make it legal for guys to just be nude? Like in the streets or something? It's like really bizarre. I read that somewhere. I don't know if that's true or not, but it was just like, you know, God just needs to rain fire and brimstone down and destroy that wicked place. I swear, I think that's what's going on there. I don't know for a fact, but I thought I read that somewhere. But either way, there's still an element of shame. Why? Because it's a shame to have your nakedness exposed. And when you're dressed in almost nothing, your nakedness is exposed. And in fact, it doesn't even have to be almost nothing. Isaiah 47, look at verse number 2. We wear clothing in order to cover our nakedness. It's one of the primary functions of clothing. 
I mean, there's also protection and other things from the elements that we receive, but we, we definitely want to cover our nakedness. That's what Adam and Eve were doing in the Garden of Eden. They're trying to cover their nakedness. As soon as they received the knowledge of good and evil, what did they want to do? Well, they realized, hey, we're naked. I'm ashamed of being naked, so I'm going to try to cover up. That's what they did. Other than that, they didn't even need clothing. But they wanted to put some on to cover up their nakedness, to cover their shame. Isaiah 47, look at verse number 2. The Bible says, Take the millstones and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the river. So he's talking about like fording a river, going through the river. He's, so he's, he's saying, you uncover the locks. You make bare the leg. You uncover the thigh. Pass over the river. So look at verse number 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. Turn, if you would, to Exodus 28. We're going to see basically the same thing. We're going to see two places in Scripture where, when it talks about here, it got, you make bare the leg, and then you get up to the thighs, and that's talking about your nakedness. And in the Bible, the Bible describes you being naked as your thighs being exposed. You don't have to go all the way up to the waist. Because where do your thighs start? Your thighs start right above your knees. I mean, that's where your thighs start. And when you start exposing your thighs, you're exposing your nakedness. We're going to see another example of this in Exodus 28. Just so you know, I'm not just making this up or I'm not trying to yank that out of context or try to apply it in a way that doesn't make sense. We're going to see another witness of this in Exodus 28. Exodus 28, verse number 41. The Bible reads, And thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother and his sons. And this is what it's talking about, the, the priest's garments. Right? God had designed for what he wanted the priests to wear when they're doing the service of the Lord in the tabernacle. So he's talking about the priest's garment. He says, Thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother and his sons with them, and shalt anoint them, and consecrate them, and sanctify them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Verse number 42, And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness from the loins, even unto the thighs they shall reach. So the reason why he's making them breeches is to cover their nakedness. And where is it? Where, how long does it have to be in order to cover their nakedness? From their loins, right their waist, down to their thighs. It covers that whole element. Covers the nakedness. So when you go out in public and you're wearing the short shorts or the short skirts or whatever, you know what? Just because your private parts are covered doesn't mean you're still not exposing your nakedness, according to the Bible. And the Bible says it's a shame.